right, well, it's 10 o'clock. I mean, you know it's time for another fireside chat with the experts. I'm David Crudoff. I'm here with uh, Carlos Valenzuela and Luke Bologna. And we're going to be talking about body armor inspection. Um, we recently had uh, an article written about us for the armor, ins um, armor plate inspection. So we've gotten a couple questions since then, get more specifics on it and what we're doing in this industry. So I invited our uh, our experts in it to uh, share with us more specifics about it. So uh, Luke, why don't you give us some background on the body armor industry for those who aren't experts in the field? Um, you know, what is this? What, what do they do? Um, why do they need inspection? Sure. Um, once again, I just wanted to start out thanking Body Armor News for writing that article. It's been a pleasure working with this industry and getting to learn it more. Um, but so with body armor, there's a ton of different varieties and types of body armor out there that you can buy, um, whether it's for personal use or for military use. Um, uh, there's, so you have soft body armor, um, usually it's like fabric material and you wear it over your chest, usually you strap it on. Um, and then you have different types of plate armor, which is you have steel, you have ceramic, you have composite, um, or you have you even have like polyethylene, which is more like a plastic material. These are actually inserts that you will insert into a plate carrier. So you have a vest with an open slot and you can put the plates inside. Usually you have one on your chest, one on your back, and you can even put them in the sides if you'd like as well. Um, so there's different levels of protection. Um, they, they can be certified for level two, level three, 3A, 3 plus, level four being the highest level of protection. And all that's saying is, what rating a plate can withstand, what caliber um, round can hit the plate and the, uh, the wearer will be okay. Um, and there's different certifications, whether they're NIJ certified, but it gets kind of complicated with that stuff. So, um, but where X-ray fits into all of this is that um, uh, it just it comes down to quality. Um, we want to make sure that every end user of an armor plate um, is protected to the highest degree. Um, so that any plate coming from the manufacturer has been measured, has been inspected, and has been given the okay to be used in the field. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. So uh, Carlos, Luke mentioned several different kinds of, of armor plates. Yeah. What um, can do they all benefit from X-ray? Are there certain kinds that really benefit more than others? Um, yeah, I and mean, we can we can speak with you know from uh, from personal experience, right? Or as you know, what Creative Electron has done so far. Um, you know, these are all part of this what we what they're called sappy. Uh, it's more armor plate insert. So basically, you know, you 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 have this vest. And you have inserts, you know, you have one in the front for your chest, you have, you know, some of your sides and your back, and they're all meant to cover, you know, vital organs, right? You know, they're not, it's not a full coverage, right? Because you, these, you know, people or soldiers, they start to be able to move and run. Um, so these are, um, sorry, kind of sidetrack on the question, but um, <laughs> that happens. Yeah, you know, we, we, most of the ones we've done so far, there's some sort of, uh, hard material, whether ceramic or some, you know, new, um, new type of, of plastic, whether it's Kevlar and things like that. And, and when you x-ray these, you know, you're able to see inside and you're able to verify, you know, the integrity of this product, right? Whether, you know, some foreign object was introduced while it was being made, whether it's actually, and we, we're, right now, so far, we've been talking about new product, right? What about, you know, product that's been out there for for a couple of years, right? And you, you want to x-ray it again just to make sure it's still safe for for a person or for a soldier to use. Um, so you can detect foreign objects. You can see cracks. You can see everything on on, on any sort of uh, um, uh, plate. Uh, they go from um, small, you know, for a smaller chest size to an extra large. Uh, and then the sides are actually a lot smaller. They're more like four by four inches and they kind of vary in size and, and material. You know, steel is not as common anymore. It's, it's too heavy. You know, most, most of them are, are become more of a, of a kind of 
a very modern, you know, kind of plastics and like Kevlar and polyethylene, like uh, um, uh, Luke just mentioned earlier. And yeah, I, in to elaborate on your question a little more too is yeah, not all X-ray or not all armor plates need to be X-rayed. Like I don't see steel being a very uh, useful X-ray application. Uh, if there was some bit of corrosion or pitting that would uh, be an issue to the plate, you could probably see it visually. Um, well, what if it cracks? You know, if it cracks, then you you could X-ray it. You that, is crack. True. that is so. true because a lot of the steel plates they do have coatings on them. So yeah, so that could be yeah, it, it could be an issue. It, it, that could be an application, but I mean, like you said, they're less common. So um, yeah, really they're focus on it, but they're becoming more modern. Uh, more protection with less weight, but more expensive. Yeah, exactly. So, like, so they're, they're, yeah, they, they get they get they get smaller, they get thinner, but they also, you know, protect against higher um, caliber um, rounds. But they're actually becoming very expensive, right? And and you know, one of the things that the government, you know, all this is is like a bidding war who is willing to make this place for cheaper, right? So you got to make the inspection process as efficient as possible. So this is this is where some of our equipment comes in. So speaking of that, how has technology improved over the last 10, 15 years uh, to make that easier or to make it less costly from the inspection standpoint? Yeah, and that's a, that's a great question. Um, you know, we at Create Electron, we didn't invent, you know, X-ray technology. We were trying to make it as as good as possible, and you know, as efficient, and you know, to let's say the average user. Um, so, you know, to my knowledge, I saw some pictures online of some of the uh, original X-ray machines designed for armor plates, and they were huge and slow. And you know, my idea was that they kind of needed uh, to get revamped, right? Um, especially on this new era of digitalization. You know, people want their data now. They want things to run fast. They want to see, you know, on a live, how many plates I failed today, how many plates failed in this hour, you know, all these sort of things. Um, so a lot of the technology has been, you know, one, improving image quality, uh, you know, transferring from old school or um, digital, going to a digital detector over film or, or, or CR, which takes like a scanner and, you know, more of a, a longer process, you know, a scanner would take about two minutes to, to process a, a plate, you know, our, our technology can do it in six seconds, you know, or even shorter, right? Six seconds is just to optimize, uh, to get the best image possible. Uh, but aside from that, you know, everything else that comes with it, you know, it, it's more efficient motors, you know, faster computers, uh, all that stuff, you know, this is what the industry kind of needed. Um, and so far we had a pretty good experience with, with customers and, you know, the customer feedback has been great of some of the things that they didn't know you could do with an extra machine. And yeah, to touch up on something you said as well, like these armor plates, uh, they are becoming more advanced and with anything that becomes more advanced like that, the manufacturing process, has to be more precise and it has to fit those demands. So um, your, your inspection equipment also has to fit the need. Um, if you're using older technology, you don't have the proper imaging filters or the proper resolution, you might not be able to catch as much as you need to. Um, if you're looking at like a bonded two layers, like the bond between two layers, um, and you're looking for like foreign objects, for example, um, if there was something on an older system and you just couldn't see it, you wouldn't see that there's a little break in that bond. If there's a piece of fabric, it's not gonna adhere as well. And it could, you know, um, it, it's, I don't mean to be morbid, but it could be life or death for the application. And it kind of has to, so I don't know, I guess your inspection has to match the, advancement of the technology in the plates. Yeah, and, and, and something, you know, now you have this, you know, 
state of the art machine, right? Creating this digital image of your plate. Now you have endless tools to analyze this plate, right? Whether it's AI, Right, you know, if 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 your defects are weird, if they're cracks and they're not very, they're not in the same area, you know, you can use this uh, deep learning approach where you take a lot of pictures and and the system starts to understand and learn what a defect looks like. Um, you can do automated measurements. Um, it's 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 kind of endless the the amount of the kind of information you can get from one image. Uh, you know, we we done. We've done uh, projects with with AI where we detect cracks. Uh, we've also done projects where we measure the plates. So the need of a uh, actual measurement tool outside of the X-ray machine it's neglected, right? So we have with machine that can do inspection, measurement, and it even let's say sorting, right? If it, if you put a plate and you expect to be a small, but you measure it and measure it more like a large, then the system can flag it. So it's 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 so much information that it's almost tailored to what the customer wants or what the customer this specific customer needs right you have all this information you have all this data what do you want to do with it you know that's what it becomes right you don't want it to do too much and, and kind of slow down the process or overcomplicate it um but it's, it's up to the the customer and the end user to decide what they want to do with it i think the most important part of that just to build on that is that um the systems that we develop will do that fast. Um, it gives you the speed to inspect every plate to that degree fast. Um, it seems like a lot of times with x-ray technology, because it is such an old technology, people use will use older methods. And while they can still work, they're, just the speed and the degree of precision is maybe not as high as it could be. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's any major bottlenecks, you know, on, on our system anymore. And I think if you want it to run faster, you know, it's it's, it's a matter sometimes of just getting a, a faster computer. You want it to be more efficient, you know, get a faster conveyor belt. You know, these these things are, they're easy. We're not dealing with, you know, having to wait for an image to be processed that takes two minutes. You know, the image takes a few seconds. So, yeah, I, I think that's a good point. Um, Luke and I think we um, we we have a pretty good technology here. Mm -hmm. One of the things, Carlos, you mentioned uh, earlier on about um, inspecting plates, not just at the point of manufacture, but uh, later in their life. Um, what's the reason for doing that? What what's the benefit of of this uh, re-imaging of sure. these plates? Yeah, and and kind of when I when I was talking about this, I, I had a kind of like a deja vu moment when I was uh, um when I was we were you know my wife was expecting our first kid. We did somebody hand us down a, a car seat, and they're like, "Oh, check the expiration date." And I was like, "Why?" You know, the car seat has an expiration date, mm -hmm. and we checked it, and it was expired. Um, and it's just things ting deteriorate over time, right? You know, the, the plastic's more brittle and it's not exactly the same concept here. But what that means is that if this plate was x-rayed five years ago, we don't know what has happened to it over the last five years. You know, is, is it if it's made out of, uh, you know, some sort of plastic, is it is it more brittle? Is it less dense? You know, and one of the benefits, if, if you have all this digital information, that means that if you x-ray it every year, you're going to you're gonna have a picture of it on a yearly basis. And you can see if it's getting thinner, if it's getting cracks, if it's getting smaller just from wear and tear, um, kind of what it looks like inside. If it, you know, last year it didn't have a crack or if it had a crack that just barely passed, you know, your criteria, it's almost like a glass, you know, your, your windshield, right? You know, it gets tiny. And then, you know, the next day you're like, I think it's the same size. I'm not sure, right? But uh, um, on, on this plate, you know, you have two images, right? Is is the crack is the crack getting wider? Is it getting longer? Um, to a point where you know you can't use that plate anymore. So um, th that is just from a um, kind of technical standpoint. But the reality is, is that these have to be recertified. It, it's a government. Um, it's mandated by the government. You know, they have to get certified. It's not just you know, oh, it'll be nice. You know, they have to. 
Yeah, and it's um, <laughs> it's laughing about your windshield because I just have was realizing I have a crack in my windshield. So thanks for bringing that up, Carlos. Yeah, um, I can get you a, a next ring machine for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah, but that's a good point too. Is yeah, once the the structure starts to be compromised, there are cracks being introduced into a plate. It's not going to offer you the same protection, and that recertification process is important because um, you could have an older plate. Maybe it didn't get used as much and it is still fine. It'll still offer the user protection um, or it could have been used and been in the mud and dirt and being stepped on and thrown around and it's junk. And you don't want to give that plate to someone going, oh, yeah, this is going to save your life when it has all these problems and is offering you much less protection. Um, yeah. yeah, it sounds a lot like a motorcycle helmet, right? I don't think you're allowed to buy or sell a, a used motorcycle helmet. Is that correct? Yeah. Same, same principle? Yeah, that, that's what motorcycle helmet manufacturers do as well. Um, if you think your helmet might have been dropped and is compromised, a lot of them will um, inspect them and recertify them or tell you that they're bad. Um, because when it comes to things like that, there's really no substitute for having something that might be broken or might not protect you. Um, and yeah, that was a, that was a great example, David. I think yeah, nobody cool. wants to associate their name to a, you know, use helmet, right? Yeah. You know, there's just, and that's something we haven't discussed yet, you know, um, helmets, you know, that's, you know, right now the topic's more, you know, the armor plates, but, you know, helmets is another you know, huge industry for, for x-ray, um, certification. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, um, I've, I've heard, I guess I shouldn't say no, but, um, <clears throat> heard about, uh, you know, police throwing their, their armor plates or their vest in the trunk and those kind of tossing it around, um, or, um, in the military, they, I don't, I don't know if they actually pass off their plates when they end their tour. Um, so those kinds of things where you, you don't, now, I wouldn't want to just pick up an armor plate and uh, assume it's fine if it's been through someone's uh, tour of duty, right? Exactly. It, people that are in these extreme situations that are using these these plates and this sort of protection, uh, I would imagine the last thing they're thinking of is, "Oh, I don't want to break my plate. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to lay down too fast." You know. I mean, they're using them. They're and, and they do get tossed around, and they are used and just due to construction if you dropping them could mean shatter or not shatters but it could be compromised that could introduce cracking into it so <laughs> yeah and and if you actually think about it um you know if if there was a system you know where you can just get a new plate every month or something and then the plate you had last month just gets recertified you know we're not talking about putting you know, a lot of resources into, you know, into making sure that this plate is okay, right? Instead of verifying it every, every year, you know, what about certifying it every, every month, right? If we made a very simple system, which we have, right? You don't have to, you, you know, if you get a plate today and you toss it tomorrow and, 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 you know, and it breaks, you're not going to know until, you know, who knows, right? So, and, you know, and that's my experience, right? You know, we're not, a, um, I, I don't think anybody, you know, either myself or Luke or, or David's been in the military. Um, so that is just our, our input from, you know, outside source, right? You know, try to make it as easy as possible. Yeah, which is one of the things that I always, um, that always seems to be something that surprises people about, just our machines in general is a lot of people have this thing with x-ray where they think it has to be hard or it has to be like a complicated process um but I, I take pride that our machines are so easy to use like um and usually they're really they're always user friendly and like the in our form factor is typically pretty small so they don't have to be these huge like daunting pieces of equipment you know they they're they're really user friendly actually and it, it it just i just wanted to comment because everyone is always so taken back whenever 
I'm showing them a machine. They'll, they're always like, wait, really? That's it? Like, you just press the on button? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you just put it in and press the button. And obviously, it, they're not always that simple, but it can be that simple. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and speaking of use, um, in all the industries that we serve, especially ones that, that aren't as familiar with x-ray, um, or it's not as common in their industry, safety is always a concern, right? You hear about x-rays, that means radiation, that means right, uh, cancer, necrosis, right? That there's things associated with that. Um, but these machines are, are very safe, correct? Yeah. I mean, do you want to go, Luke? Yeah, sure. Yeah, they're extremely safe. Um, and the main reason why is because they're closed cabinet x-ray systems. So our machines are leaded and double leaded and um, have inter multiple interlocks to make sure that no door can be open while x-rays are present. Um, so all of the radiation being created at the source is fully contained inside the box, inside the cabinet. Um, and we take um, strict like guidelines to make sure that um, our machines make those requirements and that there's no radiation being transmitted out into the world. Um, we're always well below the what the FDA requires us. So, um, I mean, these can be implemented um, basically anywhere. There's really no there's really no too hard pressing regulations. Um, and like due to form factor, uh, they can fit into a lot of spaces and it, it doesn't have to take up half of your production floor to have an x-ray machine. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think one of the misconceptions, um, is it just the radiation in general, you know, something, um, the, the sources we use are, are what's called ionizing radiation. So it produces radiation through a device, right? That requires a voltage. So we control when that's on. This is not radioactive material. Like, you know, you're not gonna open the door and then be exposed to it. So it, it all, it's only on when we want it to. Um, it, it basically is the same as the machines at airports. You know, our machine for, um, for this industry looks like an airport scanner. It has way, you know, has different technology, different capabilities, but from the looks of it, you will think it's one of those. Um, so, you know, it, it's it's very, you know, user friendly. It has a conveyor. You put in your plate, and it comes out the other side. So, yeah, they're very safe. Uh, like Lou said, you know, they're 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 lined. They're very heavy. That's 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 the only back. You know, that's the only bad thing about it. You know, they probably weighs a thousand pounds. Um, but uh, but aside from that, it's, it's safe. You know, operators around it are okay. You know, and and we recertify it every every year. So we go back. You know, sometimes we go every six months, depending on the use, right? If they want us there, you know, sooner, just to make sure that operators are trained there and they're you know they're using it as as efficiently as they can. Uh, we can go as as you know. Sometimes some some clients want quarterly um, visits. Some just do yearly. Um, the state mandates us to go back every year just to make sure that, you know, something hasn't happened um, to the machine, you know, outside of normal operation. Yeah, typically um, what I would find funny when I would, you know, go and do these services is that there would be more radiation in the background than if I was up right next to the machine in the corner because you have this this uh this huge lead box that's blocking radiation and you would think that the x-ray machine would be creating radiation out to the outside world but it's actually would be lower than just the background radiation but uh, and i was i would just show people just as just to show them because there is this like taboo thing about radiation and x-ray uh people would commonly make jokes I'd be like, oh, am I still going to be able to have kids? Am I going to grow a third eye? I'm like, no, it's not like that at all. Like, uh, the dose rates from our machines are so low. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I always try to inform people that it's a, it's much lower and there's no taboo with radiation from x-ray machines. <laughs> yeah, I think most people are experiencing it to go to the dentist. They got to put on a big lead apron and then the uh, 
the person leaves the room to turn it on, right? Makes it very scary. <laughs> um, yeah. But that's that's a whole different kind of X-ray machine, right? You're talking about a room. Um, those those walls are usually uh, lined with some um, radiation safety stuff uh, material. But, yeah. Um, and one thing, one thing to note, real quick, is that the, the, it's this industry, the armor plate X-ray inspection industry, it's very established. Um, you know, the people that have been X-raying plates, they've been doing it for twenty years. You know, they've been doing it maybe probably even longer, right? Um, so, you know, what we're trying to do here is just optimize this process that's already been done. Um, just make it, you know reduce so let's say an average time it can take two minutes let's say you know now we can do it in 15 seconds but we can also add defect detection measurements so you know the the, the taboo around or this the fear of x-ray might not be there because you know some of these people already have the experience with it um but uh, uh but it's also good to to know right what type of you know how are we being safe with our systems and all that stuff but but i think the main uh, you know, objective of us getting into this industry was optimizing the process. Mm -hmm. You know, speed and you know, speed data and, and results. Everything is just you know better. So we've been talking a lot about quality. Um, we got time for one more question for you guys. Um, Creative Electron obviously deals a lot with quality inspection uh, throughout several industries, but another big area is counterfeit detection. Um, you know, we started a lot with counterfeit detection for electronic components. Now we've done it for um, lots of things, uh, golf balls for uh, fashion stuff, um, but this can be used in our plates as well, right? Yeah, I think, I think Luke had, a, uh, had an experience in, on, in this. Oh, uh, yeah, there was an article published about um, there's a government contract that um, the government was buying iron plates from a company and they turned out to be uh, a completely different product from China that were not nearly as, but what, it wasn't what they paid for. Um, so like we've been doing uh, counterfeit detection for a long time and we really can implement it to like any industry um and whether it's uh imaging like a golden sample that you know is um an actual product and then running comparison software to make sure that they all look the same or whether it's just you know there's just a, a box of a thousand plates and you run them all and it just tells you which ones look different and then you can decide later which ones might be of concern or things like that um but I mean, yeah, like like I said, we've been doing that kind of stuff for so long. It's kind of like second nature for us. <laughs> um, and we do have quite a strong reputation with a lot of like uh, our government contractors and anything government related because we are 100 percent or where we are made in the USA. So and we do make our machines right in San Marcos, um, right down the street from where we are right now. So. Um, like everything is controlled in house, and there's no like conflicts of interest or anything, or you know, we have no motives to be doing anything poorly. So, yeah, and and you know, it, it wouldn't be a a conversation in 2020 without bringing you know the pandemic to the conversation, right? Um, and and with the current um, uh, supply chain disruption, right? It's always good to um, to buy us made products but we do the same right you know we do we do we want to you know create um jobs help the economy all that stuff but but it's also you know when you buying um overseas sometimes there's that fear that you're not getting you know what you want right and, and that article that luke mentioned was just they were just rebranded plates i mean they they there were plates but they were just not the, what they were supposed to be and, and, you know, my experience so far is that even though all these companies follow uh, government regulations, like, you know, they have to measure this, they have to do this, they have to uh, take a round of this size. Every single company has proprietary ways of doing it. So they might 
you know, they might do something where, you know, their secret sauce, right. Um, that will show up different on, on an x-ray image. Right. So that this is where, you know, using our system would kind of benefit in, and you know, on the, the counterfeit detection. Right. And I don't want to say counterfeit, but, you know, some says we'd like to use the word more uh, suspect where, you know, one looks different than the rest. And I kind of touched on this earlier where maybe it's just a different category. Maybe you mixed in through the process a different type of plate with another one. But, you know, that is what we call, you know, suspect or could be a counterfeit. Um, so, you know, that that's that's where our our technology can come in and, and, and help out. Awesome. Well, thank you, guys. Uh, we're a little bit past time, so I appreciate uh, you joining me today, the Fireside Chat with the experts. Uh, if anyone has any questions, you can post them. Uh, we'll have this up on YouTube uh, later today, so you can post questions there, or you can just email us, and uh, we'll be sure to get a response out to you. Cool. Thanks again. Thank you, David. Bye. Bye.